Every so often, a film comes around, often unexpectedly, that utterly flattens you, sending resounding shockwaves through your system and triggering every bit of emotion you didn't realize you had. Sometimes these works come in the form of relatable character journeys, misty-eyed nostalgia pieces, or stories that are so honest and human, one can't help but be moved by it. These films can rip your heart out or make you believe again, in some cases both, but rarely can a filmmaker take hold of one's emotions in such a profound way, confidently casting a spell that completely envelops one in the utter mastery of their craft. Perhaps this is exactly what makes Trey Edward Schultz's third feature film a true cinematic marvel. Waves is a deeply personal, intoxicating, and harrowing tale of a family crumbling at the foundation after a severe tragedy and their journey to healing. It's a story of love, loss, and the human condition, cementing Trey Edward Schultz as a filmmaker whose perfect craftsmanship fuels his ability to speak from the heart in a way that will move people. It's precisely this touch that allowed the emotional weight of Waves to crash into me as I drowned in its sadness, only to be welcomed by optimism as I came up for air. And in so doing, Schultz has not only put forth one of my favorite films of 2019, but quite possibly one of the greatest films of the decade. Schultz is a filmmaker who thinks visually. Even before he steps onto set and the cameras start rolling, he's composed the visual language of the film in his head. Hell, he mapped out the entire opening scene from It Comes at Night in his head as he wrote it, which served as the genesis for the rest of the film. He's a storyteller who thinks with emotions first and how he can let those feelings take flight in a way that allows audiences to experience what he so deeply feels. Perhaps his prowess over the visual grammar of filmmaking originated during his time working on Terrence Malick movies, possessing the same cerebral tendencies as the aforementioned master. But still, there's something distinctly provocative about the way in which Schultz captures the human experience. He moves the camera organically, with an emphasis on people, manipulating the lights, colors, framing, and aspect ratio to better explore the internal. These are tactics he has employed in each of his films, and it's this intimate approach that sets Schultz apart. However, nowhere is this more apparent than in Waves. The use of an orbiting camera to replicate the sense of someone spiraling out of control, the changing of aspect ratios to create a sense of confinement, the shifting and darkening of contrasting reds and blues as two lovers grow further apart, every choice is purposeful and effective at creating an engaging and immersive experience. In fact, Schultz understands the power of visual language so well, to the point where most audiences won't even know Notice that he has them in the palm of his hand until he subtly and gradually begins to push and pull in wave-like fashion, replicating the emotional state of our main characters. Schultz has always employed such effective techniques that suit the characters in their current state, and his artistry in waves feels like the punctual affirmation of a filmmaker so deeply confident in his own cinematic voice. However, perhaps more so than the director director's visual language, Schultz takes the experiences from his own life to tell stories that are so raw and genuine. Across all three of his feature films, Cretia, It Comes at Night, and now Waves, Schultz has explored a constant thematic throughline of complicated family relationships, and whether intentional or not, is something undeniable that allows the director's work to resonate with audiences. On IndieWire's Filmmaker Toolkit, Schultz said that the horrors of Cretia were inspired by his messed up relationship with his biological father. The film is not only a masterclass in utilizing the resources at your disposal to craft something special, but also an exercise in family bonding, as Schultz's own family starred in the film, specifically his aunt Cretia Fairchild, who was instrumental in Schultz's filmmaking journey. It Comes at Night was written over the course of three days after the traumatic death of his father. Cut off our relationship, hadn't seen him in over 10 years, and then he got pancreatic cancer and was dying really fast. And then I was with him on his deathbed, and he was so full of regret. 
uh, and it was the closest I've ever come to death, and it was traumatic. Two months after that, you know, I was like reading books on genocide and like looking at Triumph of the Death, Peter Bruegel painting, and like watching dark stuff, but just thinking a lot and thinking about my fears and and us as a society and these cycles of violence and what we keep doing to each other and like just like my fear for our future and like my future and my own mortality, all this really heavy shit. The result was a cathartic and poignant look at grief through the lens of fear, making for a film with far more to say than your average psychological horror film. In perfect contrast to Schultz's previous exploration of the dark side of humanity, Waves serves as a plea for love and forgiveness. Schultz draws upon the many relationships and trials of his life, but once again, harkens back to the pivotal final moments he spent with his biological father. In one of the film's climactic sequences, instead of leaning into hatred, Schultz offers the opposite perspective, showing the power and importance of love. If he can forgive and put to rest his own demons, we as a society can act with a love first mentality as well. While this exchange makes for a crucial moment in the film, Schultz also draws from his relationship with his girlfriend. Exploring both the good and the bad in contrasting halves of the film, Schultz illustrates the turbulent nature of relationships when our own daily battles disrupt the state of things. How we handle and overcome these trials is ultimately what determines the success or failure of the relationship. By boldly utilizing direct experiences from his own life, Schultz understands the innate power in being open and honest with an audience. This openness finds itself in the form of a wrestling injury he sustained during his senior year of high school and the implications that came out of that, a pivotal conversation he had with his stepfather, a road trip he and his girlfriend took to visit his father on his deathbed, and most importantly, his working relationship with one of the stars of the film, Kelvin Harrison Jr. Schultz recalls and interweaves these specific exchanges in such vivid detail, professing his mastery of human emotion and understanding the relatable power these personal experiences will have in allowing an audience to connect. This openness would be impressive enough, however, the true impact of Waves can be found in its inclusion of each of the cast members' own experiences. A winning collaboration formed between Trey Edward Schultz and Kelvin Harrison Jr. during their experience on It Comes at Night, and one could sense their passion to continue exploring more stories together. Waves is as much the result of Harrison Jr. as it is Schultz. In fact, much of the film's commentary on black excellence, what it means for a young man to grow up in an African-American family, and the societal struggles that poses all stemmed from Harrison Jr. as the actor drew upon his own experience being pushed as a musician from a young age. The contributions continued as Schultz welcomed new cast members to the project, inviting them to include their personal experiences. This fostering of inclusivity allows for many of Waves' themes to authentically ring true and allows for each of the actors to deliver sincere performances that could only come from the heart. It's what allows each of us to find something to latch onto whilst experiencing this roller coaster of emotions. However, while Schultz expertly packs this story full of genuine human emotion, the secret to Waves' effectiveness is its structure. Waves develops a cadence early on, aptly emulating the natural phenomenon of the title. It starts with ripples, small, subtle disturbances that gradually begin to ramp up with the relenting pain and turbulence that consumes our main characters. Every so often, Schultz will give us a taste of optimism, only to pull it away as we're forced to watch the self-destruction of a child and the crumbling of a family at the foundation. When the dust settles, Schultz has left us in the same cold, catatonic state as the family at hand, with only a single bright spot of hope to salvage us from the rubble. In so doing, Waves becomes a tale of two halves, one of death and rebirth. In the latter of the two, we are reminded that even in the darkest of times and through the horrific hand life can deal us, 
that positivity can be found. Love, forgiveness, and learning to persevere through the pain can save us. Schultz's emulation of literal waves is such a powerful tool that, paired with the previous two techniques, delivers a resounding gut punch, yet leaves you with optimism. By this point, I'm sure the infectious beauty of waves has become abundantly clear. However, what truly brings all of this home is the power of music. Music has always played such an important part in Schultz's life. In fact, it often helps him during the scripting process. With Waves, Schultz compiled a specific soundtrack that he not only listened to while writing, but gave him a better understanding of what each character was feeling at any given moment. Many of the tracks are connected to some of the director's most vivid memories that found their way into the final film. Similar to the structure, each song is purposefully selected to match the intensity, emotionality, and overall aesthetic of each scene. And what's even more effective is how these songs build off of one another to tell a story. The film opens with Tame Impala's live version of Be Above It, a spiraling hypnotic cycle that beautifully complements Schultz's orbiting camera and daily routine of Kelvin Harrison Jr.'s Tyler. From there, Schultz puts us in a trance through the use of Frank Ocean and Dinah Washington, serving as the calm before the storm. Once the world begins collapsing in and all hell breaks loose, he leans heavily into electronic vibes and hip hop and club bangers from ASAP Rocky, Tyler the Creator, Kendrick Lamar, they, and especially Kanye West. In an interview with the film stage, Schultz discussed the influence West's music had over the film, specifically his albums Yeezus and The Life of Pablo, saying the following. Using I Am A God feels so true to Tyler. Not only is that the kind of music you'd hear in that headspace, but it's kind of spilling out of his head and pouring into the rest. I think the Life of Pablo poster on Tyler's wall, that album for me plays like a man at war with himself. Ultralight Beam is this incredibly beautiful gospel hip hop. Then you have this incredibly crass stuff from Yeezus and that sort of dichotomy playing off each other in that sloppy way it feels like life in a way. We thought when The Life of Pablo came out, that would be a big moment for Tyler and his friends. I'm fascinated by the guy, and I think his spirit has worked his way into the movie in a lot of ways. These tracks so perfectly encapsulate Tyler's journey in the first half, leaning heavily into the mental and physical strain that consumes him. The experience is visceral and relentless as the soundtrack paired with flashy lights and hazy visuals swallows you whole. The heaviness of Waves' first half is precisely what lends to the effectiveness of the second. As Schultz himself put it, I would say almost spiritually the first half of the movie feels like Kanye and the second half feels like Frank Ocean. Reintroducing the silky voice of Frank Ocean and the gospel soul of Chance the Rapper and relying heavily on alt-rock groups such as Animal Collective, Waves' contemplative second half uses these tracks to heal and bring out the heart of Schultz's film. They're the kind of songs that creep into your very being as they pump you full of emotion. There's an airy cerebral beauty that immerses you as Taylor Russell's Emily rises from the ashes and mends not only her broken heart, but that of her family's as well. It's an internal journey that's quiet, soulful, pure, and most of all, real. Schultz understands the inherent power these tracks possess as they envelop audiences with an overwhelming sensation. Nowhere, though, is this more apparent than in the film's climactic use of Radiohead's True Love Waits. As Tom York's gentle falsetto and soft piano accompany a montage of intimate character moments, the full emotional weight of Waves comes to a tearful crescendo, and for me personally, it was one of the most fiercely emotional endings to a film I've ever experienced. I mean, j Jesus, I'm just getting choked up talking about this right now, but I digress. Waves is truly unlike anything I've ever quite experienced before, and while the exploration of family relationships is hardly anything new, 
the way in which Trey Edward Schultz personalizes the story and immerses audiences in pure emotions is riveting. Trey Edward Schultz emerges as a master craftsman with a deep understanding of what makes us human. He boldly wears his heart on his sleeve, and it's what makes his work stand head and shoulders above other filmmakers at his level. At the mere age of 31, not many directors are capable of telling such a personal story with such poise, and it's what makes Schultz one of the most exciting filmmakers to watch today. Waves is the final confirmation that Schultz is a filmmaker with something to say, and his message is one that is sure to stick with you long after you've left the theater. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this essay on Waves. It is a movie that has stuck with me throughout the entire year. I think it's one of the most human experiences of 2019. It's one of the best films of the decade. I'm so thankful that I was able to talk to Trey Edward Schultz and Sterling K. Brown about this movie. It's such a profound film and it's you know it's as you can clearly see it's why I enjoy going to the movies and you'll be hard pressed to find another film this year that's moved me in a similar way and so hopefully you all got a sense of that this video is probably going to be demonetized because I used much of the film's soundtrack and so if you all could just do me the biggest favor in the world and please share it around show it to people i just want to get the word about this film out there i know a lot of people have seen it a lot of people have been moved by it but i want to continue to implore more people to seek this film out because it really really is something special. It's been such a process. First, I couldn't find the words, and then I eventually found the words after a lot of, you know, thinking and reflecting, and then we had to piece together this video. Thank you to Andrew Love for really helping me out with some of the editing on this thing. And yeah, I mean, ultimately, I really hope you all enjoyed it. It's been a labor of love. If this is your first time visiting the Film Speak channel, film here is our second language, as I like to say. And it's a channel where we talk about movies, we talk about all things pop culture, and we dive in deep. So if that is your thing and you can relate to that, you might be in the right place. So consider hitting that subscribe button. But really, guys, I just want to get this video out there and show it to as many people as possible uh thank you all for your continued support on this channel it means a lot if you like me specifically and you like what i have to say you can give me a follow on twitter at griff schiller all right that's gonna do it for this video guys and i'll catch you next time take care